What's going on this morning, family? Black Phoenix checking in, owner of Hog on Welding, and the founder of Welding and Hip Hop. Wanted to check in with you today and kind of give you a backstory up on me. Just kind of tell you a little bit about my past. <clears throat> a few people have asked me a uh, random time, especially the new followers to my page. I appreciate those who have subscribed and followed and liked and shared the video. So I salute all of my new subscribers and everyone who's been tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, just wanted to kind of give you a background on me this morning. I was up just thinking about a few situations that actually happened uh, while I was incarcerated that, that made me just think about how time flies, you know? You ever think about sometimes how time flies and the things you learn, you know, and I ran across the photo that I posted up in the uh, beginning of this video. And um, it just made me realize how much time flies and what I learned. You know, I went through a lot in that process. And that process, man, I can't tell you how it taught me so much. You know what I mean? For this light and I'm trying to move around because I wasn't expecting that light behind me to be so bright. So I might have to switch this up a little bit where it's not that bright. But anyways, man, um, I just wanted to check in and kind of give you a little background on me. You know, I did 10 years in the Arkansas State Prison. Um, I was incarcerated from the age of 16 through 26. And then I stayed out five years from being incarcerated. And I went back for one year, or not really a full year. It was pretty much 10 months. Um, and when I went back to prison, it was for, I was already off parole. And you know what? I went back to prison for not snitching. No lie. Got caught up in a situation with a friend of mine, and I thought he would own up to his charge. I just said, hey, man, I don't know nothing about this, man. I just hold on my word because I wasn't messing with that. That wasn't my lane, you know. So I was like, hey, surely, you know, the situation happened. My guy going to, you know, take care of his business and look out for me. It did not go on like that. Needless to say, I ended up going to prison for counterfeit money. And the crazy thing about it, <clears throat> I went to prison the second time for counterfeit money, and it was $30, $30, the most pettiest shit ever, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't tell, so I got sent back for 10 months, you know, so... It's just it's just ironic in the way things happen, man, when you when you're growing and, and, and you're learning things about life. And I remember going down at sixteen years old and I remember just thinking like, Man, how am I gonna survive this time? You know, how am I gonna make it? You know, literally, like I I didn't have a clue, man, and things were so scandalous down there, like for a juvenile, like it was wild during the early 90s, you know, especially in the Arkansas State Prison. It was like, like, you don't even know. Like, it was like terrible. <laughs> like, no no BS. And, and, and I always tried to figure out, like, why things had to be so corrupt, you know. But that's just what it was. That's just what it was in the environment I was in, you know. So I had to grow up fast from the age of 16, you know. You know, I had to grow up fast, man. And I remember thinking like, I remember thinking like, man, I got to change. If I remain the same, if I remain the same person, then I'm just going to keep coming back and keep coming back. I can tell you, man, I got a, I'm going to say an ex a friend of mine who I literally witnessed. I witnessed him come back while I was doing my time eight times. This dude got out eight times and came back while I was doing my 10-year sentence. And I had to do 10 years flat because I had a 14-year sentence on the 70%. Then I got in some trouble. So I did 10 years incarcerated. And, and I remember just thinking, like, man, he's taking it for granted, you know. And a lot of times, you know, we do that time. We don't know what's really going on on the outside. We don't know what a person's going through. But we have to just kind of like let that outside world go. And I remember my mom coming down and visiting me on visitation and saying, you know, son, what are you going to do after you do this time? And I had no idea. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. 
I remember telling her, I don't know, I'm going to get my GED for sure. You know, I need to do that. Because, you know, I didn't finish high school. So I was like, I need to do that. So she was like, what about welding? You know, I've been watching them on TV. They do this and that. You should think about it, you know. And I remember her planting that seed in me. And to this day, you know, I'm so thankful that she planted that seed in me because I don't know where I would be at if it wasn't for me utilizing my welding skills. When times got hard, I could always get a job. I could always make some money, you know, without <laughs> without having to relate to street violence, you know, or getting myself caught up in a system, you know, again and again, you know. So, you know, I... I really, I'm thankful that I utilized that time. And, and, I, and like I say, I went to Votec while I was down there. Like, I, I did. I did. I think I, I think I believe it was um, 14 months. It was 14 months in the combination of welding class. And we learned uh, TIG, MIG, and STIG in four positions. And I remember putting my all into it. And I remember one day the welding instructor that was in there came inside the booth while I was welding. And he closed the curtain. And he said, Joe. I said, what's up? He said, man, be honest with me. I said, what's going on? He said, you didn't well before, ain't you? I said, nah, man, I ain't never did this before. I just really want to do it. And he was like, boy, I tell you what, the way you're doing this, man, you think you didn't did this more than you, you surely. You know what I'm saying? You shit me, right? <laughs> and I'm like, nah, man, I just had the passion. I really want to do it. And you know, when you really want to do something, man, the energy you put into it, the focus you put into it is unreal. And I remember I was incarcerated. What else I was going to do? I had to just zone out and make the best of the the situation I was in. So that's what I did. And I remember, you know, embracing it and really learning it. Like, I really learned it. And then as I went, man, you know, I learned more on the job. You know, just I worked a few different jobs in prison welding from maintenance uh, to construction, you know, and then, um, I went from, once I got out, you know, I started working for a company where I was just doing like custom found, uh, fabrication and it was, a uh, aluminum and stainless. And after like a year of that, a year or maybe, yeah, like a year or so of that, then I moved on to structural fabrication and it was more of a um, flux core and stick installation where we'll go out and install it with stick welding but we'll fabricate it pretty much in the shop with flux core and I actually liked it that better you know what I mean I liked it kind of getting in the field and then it kind of showed me something you know like I said I was introduced to iron working and didn't even know what iron working was <laughs> but I was just thinking this morning man about that time I did and how how surviving that time in the Arkansas State Prison, man, as a juvenile, man, you know, I didn't get and I didn't get institutionalized, you know, where I wanted to stay in there or I kept going back, you know. I did hit a stumbling block, like I said, I stayed out for five years. I got cause I initially got out of prison in two thousand and six. And I went back to prison in 2011, um, the January, the beginning of the year. And I did 10 months and I was released that same year. And um, so I learned something, especially from that hiccup, because I shouldn't have even been involved in that situation. But life happens and you tend to make reckless decisions, you know what I'm saying? And you tend to trust people you shouldn't trust. <laughs> And a lot of them be lifetime friends, you know, people that you really think that wouldn't do you like that, that did you like that, you know. But during that time, it changed a lot of me. And, and actually, the last year, I have really realized the way it, it had affected me in other ways that I really just didn't realize. Like, you know, when you're incarcerated, you, you spend a lot of time alone thinking, meditating, figuring out thoughts, where you went wrong, what you need to do right, what you need to fix, you know. And prison affect everybody different, you know. And now that I'm free and I've been, you know, out 10 years, 
it makes me realize that prison affected me in a few different ways that I really didn't pay attention to. Like, with empathy and sympathy. Like, in there, you know, having that can get you killed or a rape. It's just what it was. It was a violent world in there. Like, I really seen some unease things happen in there. You know, I seen some people get took advantage of. Um, so, I, I witnessed, you know, what a person running their mouth and, 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 and they don't have no fight behind them. And, man, I just seen some bad stuff. And like I say, it, it, it was all a great learning experience, but it was like tr dr uh, dramatic though, you know what I mean? It was like going to war pretty much, you know? There was some stuff in there that I seen that I didn't want to see, you know? But I had to grow up and I had to embrace that time, man. And, and now that I sit there and think about it, I'm thankful that I survived, but I also see how it affected me as a man. like things that <clears throat> that I'm working on personally um, that I know that was rooted from doing that time, you know what I mean? Like, ways I had to defend myself. Like, you had to be, you pretty much had to be cold-hearted. You, you had a group or maybe a couple people that you was loyal to, but everybody else, it wasn't no love, you know what I mean? Like, you respected everyone. But if a person crossed you, you couldn't show any love because getting love would get you showing love like that to put you in a messed up situation. So me being independent, you know, how I am, you mostly see me to myself. It was still rooted for me being incarcerated, you know what I mean? Because you can't trust a lot of people. And when, you, and when you're dealing with life and when you're dealing with your manhood, you ain't going to put your faith in just anyone's hands. So... I tend to walk alone even to this day. I might have a few associates, but honestly, you know what I mean? I can't just boast and tell you that I got a handful of friends because I don't, you know what I mean? I got some people I get money with, you know what I mean? And we got that type of relationship or that type of associates. But as far as me having a lot of friends, I don't have a lot of friends, you know what I mean? And a lot of it, like I say, was due to me doing that time and then, some of my friends that I do have that I would consider have, calling a friend, they incarcerated, you know. Um, they incarcerated, you know what I mean? And um, some of them won't be coming home. And then I had, you know, some that that crossed me that I would have died for. You ever had a friend where you would have stepped in front of a bullet for and they do some stuff to you where it just changed your whole demeanor on how you view people in life, period. Like, it just... It's just crazy when you're willing to sacrifice your life for someone and you see that it's not the same way, you know. But that's all about growing up, you know, coming from a boy to a man and, and, and embracing your responsibilities as, as you know, not being naive, doing your research, knowing what's wrong or right, knowing certain things, you know, certain people can be deceit, uh, deceptive, so, you know, you can show your hand and they can instantly show you something else and you didn't know it. You know, they can reveal themselves to be a whole nother person. But during that time, man, it just made me just realize so much. Like, there were so many stories. And I want to tell you one particular before I let you go this morning that I remember my mom coming down to visitation one time, one time and she was crying. And she was hurt. I'm like, man, you know, What's going on? I didn't know was something happening in the world. You know, what was going on out there, you know? And she was just like, you know, I heard, you know, I heard about the guy that got out and come and, and went back. And it hurt us so bad because this guy was released on a furlough. And on this furlough, you have five days to visit your family. He had been locked up for over 20 years, probably 30 some years, I believe. And he got out for that five days. He didn't even stay. I believe he stayed out two or maybe three days. But I think on the third day he returned. And he returned with some oil for his tractor that he had been driving and working on in prison. And he told him at the gate that ain't nothing out there for him. He would rather go back in prison. He said, what nothing out there for him? He had been incarcerated so long that, you know, he couldn't relate to the real world. He ain't been around no woman so long. He was like, well, I don't need a woman. You know what I mean? I don't know if he was into homosexuals. I don't know. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, because I don't really know the man personally. But 
is a possibility he could have, you know, had a boy in there, uh, a punk in there, you know what I'm saying? Because, like I say, some people in prison don't be gay. They just get turned out, and they get out, and they become man again and act like the life that was in there didn't exist. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of that. I know a few of them. <laughs> but my goal in there was to survive, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I had long hair. My hair was long. I was young. And by no means was I was going to get out of prison being less than a man or not being a man. I wasn't going to fuck anybody in prison, and I wasn't going to allow anybody to fuck me in prison. That's just what it was. So I was willing to die to survive. And like I say, I hit a few bump rolls, but I wasn't going to let nothing take me down. You know, I even caught an attempted murder charge in there for defending myself because I'm not going to let no man take advantage of me. You know what I mean? So... I don't have no problem with standing up and going to war, facing adversity, head up, because that's what you got to do even in life. And, and being out here facing business and doing this, this, it makes it a lot easier because in there, it was like the enemy was like right there. And you, you know what I mean? Like you got to go up close, come back. So I get like people who have been on the front line and actually been in the war zone. Like it changes the way you think like, you don't think the same once you have witnessed evil and you have seen hurt and you have had to fight up close and personal just to protect something that was valuable like your manhood. You know, God, you know, when you was born and said you was a boy and then you got in a situation where someone tells you, well, you got to prove it to me. <laughs> like that shit was crazy in their life, you know. So, you know, you always be grateful for the things you survive. But to be personal, you know, to be honest, you know, my survival was based on the seeds that was planted in me and, 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 and the faith that I had. But welding, welding that I do now, that I, I enjoy doing, you know what I mean? I got that from prison. Like, my mom planted that seed, and, and rest in love to my mom, um, she planted that seed in me. And me surviving that time, has now given me the opportunity to just think outside of the box. And, and everybody, you know, we all have our good and bad days. But on the most part, I see how that time affected me, you know, in good and bad ways. And now I'm actually working on some of the ways that it affected me in the bad ways with, you know, with some of the, like I say, the empathy and sympathy with the raw approach because, you know, even when you're dealing with your kids or whatnot, you know, and it's crazy because some things that they don't understand and you might come to them like, with you, it's no excuses. Don't complain. Do what needs to be done. You know, to them, it's like, oh, but this is hard. And then you get to thinking like, nah, you ain't even seen hard. And you tend to be a little rougher on them. So I have to step back when I'm dealing with my kids and be like, okay, let's look at it this way. And I talked to him to encourage him, but I was literally in a situation where there wasn't no excuses. You know, as a teen, I had to do what needed to be done. You know, it was survive or uh, get killed, be a man or get fucked in the ass. It's just what it was because that's what was happening. They was raping dudes and, and it's just what it was, man. It was a cruel world in there. And for people to say that it wasn't, it what it was. You say you're a man when well, you gonna have to prove it, especially during the time I did and the era I did from 96 to 2006 was the time I was incarcerated. Really got locked up in the end of 95. So from 96 to 2006, I was incarcerated and that was a war zone. Like then during that time, you know, there was a lot of people in there from Gang Bang to Little Rock, a lot of Pine Bluff, um, a lot of Southern Arkansas, a lot of uh, NEA from West Memphis and you know, that area, you know, Memphis, you know, so it was, it was, it was, it was, it was different. Arkansas prison was very uh, different and everything was together. You know what I mean? I have heard different people say how, you know, in certain prisons, they separate the gangs. In Arkansas, you're going to be with everybody. You know what I mean? They ain't even go. Now they had situations where they had to separate when the gang violence got real bad. But on the majority part, you was with whatever, you know what I mean? And you had to learn to respect them more. You know, you won't do more time. It's, they went off the time system. 
like you get good time. So they figure the person that got five years is gonna do what he got to do, even though he's sleeping around next, right next to somebody that got life. And to me, I thought that was crazy. You in on the misdemeanor, you got to sleep for people, somebody with life sentences. They do things you got to do. Now you in there with more time. I've seen that happen. You know, where guys come on small sentences and have to do way more time because they even had to survive or they got caught up in the system. They wasn't criminals and became one in there. You know what I mean? Like, it was, man, the experience in there was unreal. So I'm just sharing it with you this morning because I was just thinking about some of the things that really affected me, but the story of the man bringing the oil back to prison, coming to the gate and turning himself back in was the story that really made my mom um, cry and made her ask me not to be like that. Don't, don't allow the system to make you want to go back, make you want to go back where you're willing to bring something to take care of the system. You know, this guy brought some oil back, you know, after... And I know he was locked up over 20 years, you know what I mean? And he said the world had, he had nothing for it. And I know it's a lot of people that would rather go in prison. Because, you know, you think about it to some people, you know, they get taken care of. They get free meals, place to stay, you know. Some people, they enjoy that type of living. But out here, you have to work and it's structure and, you know, there's sacrifices and it's going to be hard work. So you're going to have to do some things of your own. So... I'm cool with being independent. But a lot of people don't know the drive behind a person. So I just kind of wanted to give you a backstory on it because my drive is like I'm unrelentless. You know what I mean? I'm not going to switch up my message. I'm not going to change anything because I know who I am. I'm a survivor. So I'm going to just give it to you from my standpoint. I can't water anything down or talk about things that I'm not familiar with because then I'll be fake. And I'm not a fake person, you know what I mean? I don't even like fake people, you know what I'm saying? So I don't even want to be around them. So I most definitely wouldn't give you nothing like that. So I'll just be real about whatever. So uh, I try to share my experiences and the knowledge I have learned of, of welding and being independent. And my goal is to just to make things better over time. So here sh shortly I'll be coming with better quality videos, you know, with better lighting and you know, coming with some topics that a few people have inboxed me with that we need to actually address. And then I also want to come with a little small series once a week. It seems like Saturday is the day that majority of people pick in the morning. So it looks like that's what we're going to go with. Uh, probably Saturday mornings uh, going live at a, at a certain time to kind of get people the chance to uh, tune in. And as we get to going and picking up once a week, I know people will start uh, knowing the you know the time and start checking in with me, but um, like I say, I want to do something different, do something different, but be authentic and and just give you a part of my journey. You know, showing you where I came from, why I use the word welding and hip hop. You know, me being an artist and me working on my own thing independently and trying to find my own lane. You know, and I think it's all about creating your lane. So if you're trying to do something, man, you got something in you, so it's good to try to find you, your lane, you know. But my story of survival during that time in prison made me who I am. And I just wanted to show that picture because it made me even think about, like, damn, that picture was actually my first Christmas in prison. And I was like, damn, look at this. My first Christmas. I remember that photo. I remember the time, you know where everything was serious. Majority of all my photos <laughs> in prison, I had a serious look. I remember I probably smiled a few times, but it wasn't a lot, you know. But I just I just realized now how that how that time affected me and how I got to use it to take my life to a different level. So for those who are going through something, just because you're going through something right now doesn't mean it's gonna be better on the other side. You know, sometimes you have to survive it. And then you'll be able to look back and reflect on how you got here and, and how it made you better. You know what I mean? So for those who's going through something, man, just keep getting your hog on. Uh, keep standing. Keep doing your thing. Don't let nothing stop you. And for those who enjoy the shirts, check me out. I got some on uh, Amazon Prime. 
So they not a lot, a lot. I got long sleeve, short sleeve, and hoodie. So for those who like the pandemic shirts, check them out. So I got different colors in that. And this is just a version of how you get your hog on. So I salute everybody that's been getting their hog on with me. And I appreciate it. Black Phoenix, I'm out.